Good morning and welcome to Motivational Morning, the podcast that gets you going before you get going. Good morning and welcome to Motivational Mornings. My name is Ryan and today I'm here with my co-host Vivi. And for today's episode, we're going to discuss the book From Good to Great by Jim Collins. In the book From Good to Great, Jim Collins and his research team looks at 11 great companies that have been outperforming the market for over 15 years and tries to find commonalities between these companies, trying to figure out what made them go from good to great. So the first point in the book is about the concept of what he calls level five leaders. So when Jim Collins and his research team looked at these 11 great companies, they found that all the leaders of these companies, all the CEOs had similar qualities. The reason why they call this level five leaders is the name is based on a pyramid structure they used to describe leadership, different tiers of leadership. The book didn't really dive into the bottom four leaders of the pyramid, but essentially all you need to know is that level five leaders are the leaders at the top of this pyramid, in the top tier of leaders. And now what they found is that level five leaders tend to be shy, quiet, modest, determined, and will stop at nothing. Now I found this quite interesting because being shy and quiet is not one of the first things I think of when thinking about great leaders. But Jim Collins and his research team found that these tended to be the people that were the leaders of these great 11 companies. So how can we become a level five leader? Well, level five leaders, as we say, they tend to be modest and rarely talk about themselves or their achievements. What they'd like to do instead is they like to share credit with their team. They like to help to reward other people on their team. On the other hand, when they fail, they take full responsibility and don't place blame on other people on their team. And I think maybe that's what makes them so effective is that people love working for them because they're modest, they give credit, they're not selfish. And when they're making the decisions and things fail, they take the fall and they don't place the blame on the rest of their team members. And to add on that, Ryan, Jim Collins breaks down quite intensively the difference and the importance of knowing what a level five leader is versus a level four leader. Now, don't ask me what happened to levels one, two, and three, but between level four and five, Jim Collins uh, breaks it down quite distinctly. And so level five leaders are what brings a company from good to great. It's the premise behind this book. It's to how to establish a level five leader, though, is not really super known and well known in the literature and in, if you ask a lot of people. So here's what he says. Level five leaders look out for the good of the business in the long run. And they don't seek acquisitions because they're trying to change the way things are done, how they're operating, and how they innovate in their respective industry. So for me, like back in the early 2000s, a level five leader would be like Mark Zuckerberg with Facebook. Wasn't re- really wasn't really looking to change the, um, wasn't was looking how to change the industry and how to innovate and create, and wasn't necessarily looking for an acquisition. They also understand, he says, that the delegation is the greatest strength, and therefore their work will far go beyond them if they delegate properly. That's another key important thing that I see quite frequently with people who have maybe small businesses is delegation is a big fear of theirs. They're scared that if they delegate to someone, to someone that they've hired, they may not work as hard as they will. They may not accomplish things as much as they will. But the key distinction is from being a grill level four to a grill level five leader is being able to delegate that properly so that your work can go far beyond yourself individually. Whereas level four leaders are great individual leaders, but they never give up control and delegate properly. They also look for acquisitions and are quite not as fast to innovate as level five leaders. Both of these leaders are great for the short-term businesses and operations, but only level five leaders think long-term. 
Only level five leaders think I'm trying to be in this for the long run. Another interesting thing that was discussed in this book is the hedgehog concept. Now, the hedgehog concept is the difference between the strategy of a good company and the strategy of a great company. Now, the name sounds kind of silly, but it comes from the famous essay, The Hedgehog and the Fox, where the fox tries to hunt the hedgehog, and the fox is clever, and he's cunning, and he's always planning new ways to hunt the hedgehog. And he always finds a new creative way, and he thinks he's going to win. But whenever he attacks, the hedgehog just does the same thing every single time. It's simple. He just rolls into a ball, and his spikes protect him. He finds what he's good at, and he sticks to it. Essentially, the story's about being really good at something simple, and that can be better than sometimes being super clever or super creative. Now, the hedgehog concept in the book says that companies understand three things when it comes to their strategy, and these things are, what is the company passionate about? What can the company be the best in the world at? And what is the company's single biggest economic driver. So imagine these three questions as overlapping circles. And your job is you need to find something that is in the center of all these circles, that all these circles overlaps. And if you can find that thing, then you're very likely to be successful. Now, what's interesting, this kind of reminds me of a a past podcast we did about choosing a career or starting a business and trying to figure out what area you want to dive into. And it's very similar similar three circles. And they were, what do I enjoy doing? What am I good at? And what will people pay for? If you're able to find either a career choice or a business idea that fits in those three circles, it's very likely going to be successful. And some good examples of hedgehogs that I found to add to that, Ryan, are people like Sigmund Freud in psychology with the unconscious and Charles Darwin with the theory of natural selection. Also, you can even think of people like Einstein in the theory of relativity. They were all hedgehogs in their own industries because they took a complex world and then simplified it. Hedgehogs understand that the essence of profound insight is very simple in its simplicity and sake. For example, E equals MC square. I'm sure you guys have all heard of that. But how simple are those three letters that convey so much information to the scientific community? Hedgehogs always see what is essential to the world that they're trying to change, and they tend to ignore the rest. Also, on the terms of the fox that Ryan was talking about, foxes never gain the clarifying advantage of a single unifying hedgehog concept. Rather, they spread themselves thin and have a hundred things going on. So don't be like a fox, but try to be more like a hedgehog. One other point that came up in the book that I want to discuss on this podcast is how great companies they tend to find the right team before they find the right strategy. It's also, the book goes on to say that it's just as important that the wrong people are removed from the team. One of the reasons for this is if you choose the strategy first and then hire people for that strategy, if the strategy ever change, changes or pivots, there's a good chance that those people could lose motivation or not be a good fit for that team anymore. Now, Jim Collin argues that if you find people that want to be part of the team because of the other team members, then a change of strategy or a change in direction doesn't necessarily change their motivation because their motivation is to be there for the people that are part of this team. So I I think a good takeaway of this is if we are ever in a position of building a team, which I think everyone is in this sort of position, whether it be for work, for school projects, or even choosing your friends, it might be worth considering this idea. Are the people you picking up for your team the right people for the team? That wraps up today's episode of Motivational Mornings. Now remember, if you want a quick summary of this book or any other nonfiction book 
check out Blinkist. There's a free trial. We'll link it in our show notes below. Feel free to give it a shot. Thanks for listening, guys, and have a great day.